Wait, those are different games? I think so. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, there we go. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Ben Stone here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bits in our little Linux-powered studio, trying to drive this nightmare chain. Chain? Train? Choo choo. Yes, in any direction it cares to go. And the man up north, because it's snowing in Toronto. One Jordan Swag. It's snowing on Mount Fuji. Soon to be a uh, renowned Zordon cosplayer. Mm-hmm. Zordon cosplayer. We're going to stick him in a tube. He, he's uh, <laughs> committed to cosplaying Zatarin's spice seasoning. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be adorable. And Pedro Mateus, staying up late past his bedtime. You know it on the Isles of Britannia. <laughs> and together. With you, Shot Realm Dynamic helping us form cocaine, Voltron. What's up? What's new? Another week. We got a lot to get into. And we're going to talk about the Xbox thing. Don't worry, because that <laughs> pissed me off too, everybody. <laughs> Stick around for the news section. Oh, I know neither of you would ever be caught dead getting up in the morning and going jogging unless zombies, right? And even then, there's going to be a debate probably. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 eh, the, the the front door is boarded up it's fine <laughs> like do, do i really need to survive the apocalypse uh i do a morning run i, I get up and i go running before the sun comes up and i get home and anybody who does a lot of biking or a lot of jogging you know about road money road money is a real thing you just find like a dollar bill or a five every now and then five like really rare but you know every couple of months you'll just see like a Rolled up and like, oh, look, road money. And I got like probably like $12, $13 I've made over the years, man. Uh, I saw some road money this week. It was in pretty rough shape. <laughs> but it was a $20 bill, man. I'm like, what Ooh. the actual hell? And it was raining too. I mean, it was raining, raining when I was running. So this thing was like all nasty and soggy. And I'm like, but it's $20 of road money. I'm going to put that money. $20 is $20, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, kids. And, uh, I got home and I'm like, cool. And I just like threw it and I'm like, whatever, I'll let it dry out and I'll put it in the uh, collection. It doesn't feel right. And I'm like, oh shit, did I get some counterfeit fucking money? Dope. You know, and then you hold it up to the light and you're looking and I'm like, it doesn't have a security strip in it. And I, I was looking for like, if it had been drawn on. Then I fucking read it. Motion picture use only. This is fucking movie money. <laughs> ah, this is like, prop. yeah. Like, yeah pro- pro- oh, from, from, like a, from like a movie shoot in Georgia or whatever. Or whatever, yeah, man. And like, it's fucking close. It doesn't it feel quite right. It's not quite right. And, but, uh, but, but on camera, and, and it sounds like, it sounds oh, yeah, right when like, you like mm-hmm. hold it up against the microphone or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like that, I mean, the color, it's close enough to where I, now I could see like if you were a cashier and somebody like, Gave that to you real quick. You you probably take it unless you like checked it. Oh, yeah. yeah there you go, man. Uh, uh, that that is my exciting story. I now have a motion picture use only twenty. Ah, so so if you ever get sucked into the last action hero, you can buy some tacos. Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be great, man. I'll get out of my car cocoon. Uh, what is uh, new with you, Jordan? You had a deployment this week. I saw you talking about it in Discord, and man, everything's so great. I get to stay up, hang out with my buddies oh, yeah. at work. Oh yeah, it's 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 the best time. Had to had to had to deal with uh, exterminator woes. You can listen to the pre pre super shows, and if you want uh, if you want that, uh, I I went to I went to a death metal show uh, last week. Uh, my body got destroyed, and that was fun. And yeah, it, was, it, was, it was it was good times. I, I was mentioning because they have these like gray market magic mushrooms uh, like shops just around downtown Toronto. They get shut down by the cops periodically, but like this this was like. They had the same thing just before weed was legalized here where like these shops would like pop up and then they get like shut down by the cops. And then like mm. a week later, they just like pop up in another empty rental spot. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I don't I, know I, how I, I feel about um, like cruising by like Gary's uh, fantasy mushroom emporium. <laughs> right. But it, it, it's, it's a little weird because like you, you, you can go in and like come out with a bag of hallucinogens. You can come out fucking wasted on hallucinogens. That's good. That, that's something for when I have like a handler or something. I need like to find someone who's larger than me that like <laughs> I need can watch me, to, who, who, who will like make sure that I don't get up to too many shenanigans and shove me into a cab if things get a little too crazy. Especially when you turn invisible, man. Yeah, well, I got to get naked first. Right. 
Hey, Pedro Martinez. <laughs> How you doing? Yes. Um, I'm. I, I promised a while back that as soon as I had a day off, I would uh, switch out of Nabara and into regular Be gone Fedora. Foul operating system. It's uh, I look. Nabara is a great operating system, and it's a great sandbox for prototyping things for what Eggy's doing. I absolutely get it. As an operating system that you rely on, that you use for everything. Uh, no, not for me. Thank you. I yeah, absolutely get okay, what uh, he's going for, but no. I, I think this is the first time since I've known you that you've run a mainstream operating system that wasn't like, <laughs> what do you run? Like, because it so was us. always a safe bet. It was like, whose side project <laughs> yeah. are you running? <laughs> well, Food, I, I, I enjoyed the, 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 the side project. I was a part of one. Yes. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm not enjoyed. joking, people. Like, Pedro's always had, like, I would learn about distributions from Pedro. I'm like, what the fuck is that, man? I, I very much enjoyed them, and Solus at the time was, like, a whole new distribution that wasn't based on anything. It's like, great, yeah. And then IHE went away, and the people that took over were questionable. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the... I, I again, I have absolutely nothing against Nobara, and, well, I have plenty against Nobara. It's just... I understand why Eggy is doing it. It's just not for me. Absolutely not. I had Still issue. A, <laughs> I had a list of exclusions on the uh, Yum Repos uh, option to just exclude a bunch of packages that whenever I, those installed, shit would just break. So it's like, nope. They we're just excluding all of that, and it got to the point. It's like, no, this is getting ridiculous now. I yeah, gotta here's out. the thing with no, bro, like <laughs> it. it I think it tells you that on the tin, though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah it, 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 I absolutely get my um, like, the fuck the snipe sharp the bullshit. Man. I'm, <laughs> well, and 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 and, and like the, and and that's that's the thing. Like it's 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 all a well and good. Like Eggy is an incredibly talented and intelligent and dedicated individual, but he's one fucking guy, right? And mm -hmm. there's there's only so many hours in the day that he can go and fix issues in his operating system. So unless you're willing to deal with that, uh, like. Nobara sort of becomes like a weird ask, right? But you they also gotta look like a, this is like this is my operating system that I made for me. You're welcome to yeah. use it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that right? is very like, much the thing. It's like his little sandbox to throw shit at, see what breaks. You're welcome to right. come play in it, but also <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, but but the, but like on, on the flip side, because because like all the cool shit is happening there, we're mm -hmm. seeing th this is the OS that like PC World or whatever is like, this is how Linux is beating Windows in games, and it's like it, it performs yeah, yes, very well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, technically, but like also, no, no, because you're not going to get this just out of the box on your standard Linux distribution. And no, Bara is an advanced use case. Let's be real; it is not. It is yes. not something that I would start people on. Ab not absolutely not. And so. I've managed to sort of find a few uh, copper repos that fill in some of the gaps. Like there's the Sentry copper repo for the F-Sync kernel, which is the highest voted copper repo for uh, kernels on copper. Is, is, has that still not made it into? No, like, it's in. I, I ch it's enabled by default. Anything that's uh, six six and above, you don't have to. There's no need for a special kernel. Okay, yeah, okay. I, th I thought so. I, thought it got I know because I it. built it last night. If anybody mm. wants to think about arguing, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, uh, there's because that I wanted one, to check and it and make X config, and I'm like, oh no, that's enabled by default. Oh, why doesn't it say Futex too? Let's research that. Oh, that they just call it Futex now, and it's done. It, 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 it's 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 new text. Yeah, it's easy yeah. to check too. <laughs> whether or not you can, there's a grep command you can check. And the uh, Che Mesa repo, which just builds n new Mesa once a week. I think it's once a week, and that gives you like newer Mesa, which is great. So yeah, with those two, it's oh, it's basically the bulk of the performance improvements from Nabara, but on regular Fedora. Cool. We'll just go with that then. <laughs> That's good, man. Um, yeah, Fedora is like uh, boring and stable these days. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I was kind of shocked, man. That's, that's uh, why I like it. Like there was a rare uh, Debian hiccup where they pushed out a kernel that the uh, packaged uh, stable NVIDIA drivers couldn't build against. Mm. I was shocked to see on our Debian on Reddit how many people were lost. Hmm. Like, what do? What computer broke do? I no understand. Thing not work good. And I'm like, call yourself a Debian user? <laughs> what? You call yourself Deborah and Ian? 
I don't know. I, I, I'm personally, I would be terrified of running an operating system where I didn't know how to install drivers. So you, so that, that, that describes most Windows users. <laughs> it's starting to unfortunately describe a lot of Linux users too. Uh, yeah, that's true. Well, yes. Uh, that's true. But fortunately, one thing we know, this is a horse, is a driver installation expert. I mean, the horse is a driver-free environment because there's, there's no drivers. Only one rider, and it's the Steam And we have a new sale. Well, sort of sale. It, it, it's one of those promotional things that doesn't necessarily imply a sale, but we all know it's a sale because everyone thinks that particular opportunity to lower the prices on their games, and this one is about remote oh, play no. together. Yes. You could not play remote play with a person on another planet. That is just like straight up impossible. Hang on, wait, 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 I gotta get it in 144p so it's more accurate. There you go. That, right, that's yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, a bit yeah, more yeah. accurate. No, no, no. And, but it, like the, the, the people aren't desynced either, right? Like in your inputs yeah, don't get lost. It's right. the, it takes half a second on, for my sure character to move fast. Out. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but yeah, it is, uh, a, there's a bunch of games that have local co-op, not necessarily, um, online multiplayer and they're on sale you can find the list go have a look there's a bunch of them that also have uh online co-op like call like of it duty takes two. uh you know call of duty black ops does not have online co-op it doesn't have online co-op? no it doesn't i i had that in my example at first because the first two things we see it takes two and i immediately went bullshit because I know for a fact that, that, that one I knew was, was local only. <laughs> and like Pedro, I looked at Call of Duty Bros. Too Spooky for You 3. And I'm like, of course, it's a Call of Duty. Like, then I was more shocked. Like, how did they make a single player Call of Duty? Okay, what? Yeah, yeah. They have the multiplayer starter pack. It's, it's, nope. How is that not multiplayer? <laughs> single player. <laughs> Re re remote play on tv well at, at, <laughs> hey, at, at least at least dos 2 actually does have like proper online and couch co-op because it's the Baldur's gate the uh co-op i don't know man uh looking through these men yeah it takes two kind of threw me for a loop about a lot of these games in the you know remote play together fest have online co-op and they'll say online co-op and then down at them these two things are not synonymous like we were there was a great video of Jordan snatching his headphones off, like not for effect, not for a joke out of like just straight up pain. When we were first testing this, it's gotten better. It's gotten better. And like, guys, like when was the last time they updated remote six months ago was the last update we saw for a remote play together. It's yet another valve project. Like we made a thing Bye. and who you know that that's fine. But here's what I want. Uh, cause we don't use it. Not because we're like anti remote play together. We were very gung ho about all three of us when it was first released. Mm -hmm. Cause like, this is going to get good. This is going to get better. It didn't. Um, I would like an option to filter out games that are listed as multiplayer only, but it's because they have remote play on them. Yeah. And also, also to extending that I would, I, I would think like, this is, if you if you promote yourself on the sale, this is putting yourself nominating yourself to be sh publicly shamed into adding online multiplayer to your game. Let's be real. This is this, I mean, th you, this, you are self selecting right. for this. Hundred percent right, Jordan. This could easily be called "couldn't be asked" fest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I still want that multiplayer money. Yeah. Yeah. No. Boom. All right. Couple of game updates this week, and uh, this one I'm surprised Jordan took instead of Pedro. Yeah, I, 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 I was the first one here this today, so I guess I grabbed it. Uh, but yeah, so Dead Cells, it's dead, or so you would think. So um, there, there, there's, there's a little bit of backstory here, um, but the short version is after five years of continuous updates, uh, they are no longer going to be putting out new content for Dead Cells, despite the fact that one of their main development teams was actually working on a bunch of new content. Why, you might ask, this was the case. So we got we got a we got a little blog post from Deep Knight that goes into some of the the scuttlebutt behind the scenes. Uh, so not being educated in the particulars, I thought it was just oh, uh, Evil Empire uh, was a contractor that Motion Twin had hired to do their development. We see this a lot in uh, in uh, Kickstarter games where you'll get a core team that like starts and then they'll hire uh, another studio to actually handle the development. Not the case here. Uh, Motion um, Evil Empire was actually like originally a bunch of the developers from Motion Twin that spun off into their own organization that were ha was handling the development for Dead Cells. So according to Sebastian, who is one of the the higher ups at uh, MT back way back when, um, 
mo- yeah, mo- uh, all that all that's left of uh, of Motion Twin is basically just like the 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 IP rights holders, and the actual development is being handled by Evil Empire. Evil Empire um, is is no longer being engaged for Dead Cells content, and they're saying, uh, and Motion Twin is saying, we're moving on to the new game, uh, Windblown. That's where they want to spend all their efforts. And peop- and all the fan base was going, well, what the fuck? We were promised new content, uh, but that was not, that was being communicated from uh, Evil Empire or and not Motion Twin themselves. So this 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 is the uh, this this is the situation. I get that people are upset because they're not getting brand new Dead Cells content, but like also they kind of did a Hollow Knight. They were pushing out content pretty reliably for five years after the game was released, after a pretty successful early access stint as well. Yeah, and it, I can see both sides absolutely, but I can't imagine that Dead Cells is still selling well enough to any degree to justify just having a bunch of people dedicated to pushing out updates. We will be talking about Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition in a moment, so uh, stay tuned, but it there's room for a compromise here. D- d- do the AMD thing, do the... This is a bad example, but the... Um, ah, the asymmetric multiplayer with the bugs and the humans. What was it Natural called? selection. Natural selection too. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, th- do that. Just let the community have that. If there are, and there probably are people with a lot of skill who really like Dead Cells because it is a very popular game. But yeah, the the core community that was going to get it already has it. So you're probably not seeing a lot of sales, which is why I absolutely understand why they want to just get on with the new game. I get it. I do. <laughs> I, I guess really the question we need to ask is like, how long should we like reasonably? Because uh, no matter, even if you do provide updates for ten years, and you're like, okay, we're done, the internet's still going to be angry. <laughs> oh, but so there's I, always going to be a loud right to the vocal evil. minority. I'm like, <laughs> and uh, you know that you know what you do, you everybody. But like, how long do you expect? Like you at home? Like I think. If I get like maybe a year, if I get three years of updates out of a game, I'm like, oh, cool. Because like, I'm just buying the game, you know, like at the end of the day, that was my transaction. Like what you got right there. I'm not buying like hopes and dreams and futures. I've had that kicked out of me over the years. Like I don't well, That's ex- early access, right? Like, that's- right. Like if I'm getting a finished product, I don't expect expansions and future. If I, if that comes out, I'll give you some more money. I surely don't expect like big free updates, right? I, th- I think it boils down to like communication, right? Like if, if. Because because what you're saying is absolutely true. Like, for the most part, if you buy like a game on release, that should un- unless they have said that there's going to be more, that's kind of the the expectation that that's what you're going to get. Uh, but and, and I think they're, they're, this is the right here is the communication issue where they have the development team like saying, oh, we have a roadmap. We're going to be doing all this stuff. But they never really secured the funding. They never secured the the will from the business to go do that. So they said, here's what we want to do. And the business was like, we're not willing to fund this anymore. Uh, and I guess that, that, that that's what causes this, right? The the communication disconnect. Because yeah. again, like if, if they said, yeah, we're going to give you five years of updates and that's it. I think that that would be reasonable. But like, yeah. I, I don't but know. I think all of us like looked at Dead Cells and we're like, that's still getting updates. I mean, it's even something like uh, Hollow Knight, right? And we're like, what? Because Team Jerry just kept on doing like big pushes, contents free of charge and no charge. Where I'm like, wow, that's kind of crazy. And uh, yeah, so yeah, like whatever. Like I, I'm, they'll get it sorted out. Like no big deal. Unlike gang based, a game that just <laughs> won't go away. It won't die. It keeps popping back up. You think you got it taken care of, and they're like, nope. We Sharks. were serious last time we updated the game. We're like, we're, we're we're taking care of some technical debt. I'm like, that's cool, man. That's cool, and turns out they're still hard at work on it. It's been 10 years after the first release, when this was first like public, a little alpha build that went out, and uh, yeah, they're, they're still cleaning it up. They, they want to keep going forward with it, which is kind of strange, man, considering it's a 10-year-old game that's still getting updates. Uh, they're not expecting four builds just in the first six months this year. They're like, just in 2024. And uh, one of the big things with this update is they've optimized matchmaking which is really good because last time we played we're gonna play it tonight in the after shows and uh like the first match we played everybody jumped in and it matched us up we had a full team against it and it was great every match after that it was just us Mm -hmm. it refused to work again so there's nice little uh mix of things that have been cleaned up up to and including i noticed something 
large and uh, very dangerous looking. Not not quite a bagger two eight eight, but <laughs> it's, the, it's the cragger. Yeah. So they they added they added a crane level. The, uh, they added the uh, the the cruise ship level last time. They've added the crane level this time. This has implemented a driving subsystem now, where you where can actually put the sharks on the crane. The the sharks are just going to come from below the crane. Okay. They're 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 the shark construction workers. All right. Yeah, the, but uh, but yeah, you can you can get into the crane now and move it around and try and kill people and more than more more than likely just kill yourself in the process because that's how gang beasts actually works. Um, but yeah, they, they they showed this off. Um, they they have a they have a standalone level where you can like get into a car and drive around. So I think maybe they're going to be experimenting with that in the coming updates. Maybe a couple more levels. Also, uh, they have some bug fixes like tentacles can now emerge from the water and pull you back into the depths in the aquarium level. That's always fun. It's like, wait, what's going on? Why are there tentacles? Oh, God. Oh, man. Do you think we'll get like new gang city? Maybe. Yeah. I, I, I very much look gang forward to the auto. bumper cars. Yeah, the bumper cars level. <laughs> for, for, Fortnite, but gang beasts. Dude, if they do that, there better be a tank somewhere in the city. <laughs> Could do tanks. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> You know what? I wish him the best. Bone Lopez uh, is clearly a labor of love because I don't think the game's ever at any point like sold like crazy. Mm-hmm. It, it it did the YouTuber and the streamer Ryons for a bit. Ten years ago. Do we need like gang beasts at Evo? Do we need to like start up an <laughs> FGC around it? <laughs> like the new esports game, Gang Beasts. <laughs> Evo, I, I, more people Evo. I know, I know they don't care because the type of people that go to Evo and play in Evo, like they, they're like, "Oh man, it's just your vision for my super, like you know, vision of dog." And I'm like, "Put put some punch it in there every now and then, like yeah. put a king beast in there, or you know, uh, human go fly, whatever, like chicken horse, like let's have another competitive." I, I like seeing uh, competitive chaos. Yeah, th- th- throw throw in a wild card that no one has played, and then let's yes. yeah, and er, see, see, see who can you know, up with but, the best uh, but nah, man, Evo. Evo attendees and Evo, they want to see people running strings, Jordan, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Day in and day Combo, out. Combos and combos and combos. You guys do you. Uh, never ending update. This is the never ending update segment. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> see, I, I mentioned that we were going to be talking about it, and here we are. Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. Uh, Beam Dog themselves said, we're done updating the game the community uh if anyone wants it let us know we'll give you access to everything and you can keep on developing it and a bunch of people name me uh namely uh clippy daz jesper liareth niv shat guy soren squatting monk tiny giant and virus man oh look uh, they made the guys blink that's neat that's an update (laughs) they blink now you can see the uh hdr bloom as what they're calling it that's the big change that they're doing graphical wise also proper open gl render for uh render buffer and frame buffer support which wasn't in the game but it is now where's vulcan by the way um that comes to Faerun after the spell plague like mistra has it, to die and then you can move to like winter, a newer right? version of open gl right like it, we're, we're, we're still on dnd3 that's like open gl 2.1 at best you, got, you gotta you gotta give them some time right it, you're you, it's you know the city of neverwinter during the spell plague as imagined by the people who made the Pedro, game what do you think about this um, though man they said uh you know 300 plus bug fixes but uh, over 100 bug fixes including several notorious 20 year old bugs and people yes. get real picky when you start fixing old bugs because people <laughs> use them for things yeah Speed admittedly the bugs that they've been fixing uh those legitimately needed fixing even back in the day there's been so many issues with pathing if you because you can in neverwinter nights you can either drive your character around with tank controls or you can click to go to a place and if you use the click to go to a place sometimes your characters would you know circumnavigate any obstacles that they would find and sometimes they would just attempt to go in a straight line and just go eh, against whatever yeah. placeable was in the way that's how he oh, right, right, right into the trap ago. right <laughs> into the trap that you're trying to avoid yeah. Doop, 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 it, it, it's yeah no that one and um like the the one that they mention in the little blurb is sometimes you because in the editor you can set placeables like trees environmental stuff and you can make it static so that it doesn't get destroyed it's just a part of that map and sometimes you would walk into an area uh walk halfway into said area and then all the placeables would show up it's like oh 
<laughs> Where were you guys for the past five minutes? All right. <laughs> so that's very seriously awesome job to everyone who's been working on it because possibly my all time favorite Linux native game, Neverwinter Nights. And it is still getting updates by the community, true to, you know, the Linux side of things. <laughs> I mean, that's good. I mean, it's one of those games, though. It's got that dedicated fan base. So, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we servers are still alive and they're still kicking, man. Like, I have no interest in it. The only interest I have is watching uh, you and Jordan play. That I'll watch. It, 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 yeah. It's basically a, a lot of, uh, a D&D nerd shit happening. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is too much. The communication <laughs> yeah. breakdown was not intense enough for me to... Yeah. Like, Come on. Get angry. Well, well, it's like, oh, you're, play you're playing the fast paladin. I'm a gnome little wizard, man. Give me a fucking mm -hmm. second. My movement speed is shit. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> That's going to do it for our TV news this week. Let's move on into the regular news, up to including something Jordan is using right now. Um, all of the, the return video that he's getting is being provided courtesy of Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was hoping for yellow paint, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, that's yellow, kind of, right? Yeah, 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 yeah I'll, uh, I'll, give it, I'll give it to you. Because I try to like start the video off explaining what a $5 milkshake is. That This was like when we had that discussion a couple of weeks back. I'm like, <laughs> uh -huh. I, I, I want to get a touchstone. Turns out it's a buck fifty in 1994 for a regular wow, milkshake. Oh, man, man, that's... Yeah, oh. that makes me. I that remember me the dollar menu or the euro menu for McDonald's. That, that, yeah, that just that just makes me sad. Now, yeah, now it's the five dollar menu. God Dude, damn. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about is the Magewell USB Capture HDMI Gen Two. I'm using it for return video. I needed a new capture card, and I just went on eBay, and I'm like, all right, no, 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 just doing a search, and this kind of popped up. And I've always been curious about these because uh, they're three hundred dollars. They are. Because it's a Magewell, it's a professional USB capture dongle, and that's what it means. Uh, when Magewell says it's professional, it means it's going to be really, really, really expensive. But you do get a nifty USB cable. I, I can't gush over the USB cable enough. That <laughs> USB cable is weapons grade, it is industrial, it is the silliest thing to be like, dude, this is like the coolest feature is this USB cable. If Magewell sold that USB cable, I'd buy it for like $10 a pop. But more importantly, it's a block of metal. It's half a pound. It's indestructible. You plug it in, you're ready to go. But the fun shows up when you install. What do they even call it? It's Magewell. They got the dumbest name. Capture Utility is the name of the software that you install. It is just Capture Utility. You put it in and you go. But what does that let you do? That's where the pro shit kicks you right in the face, man. Not only can you update firmware, it's got a GUI on Linux native, but you can do cropping, you can lock your resolutions, you can mute your HDMI audio, you can adjust your audio levels coming into the device, adjust your sync, say your AV sync is off, you can do it on the card itself. Not on just that, you can clone EDIDs, which if you know what that is and why that's a big feature, it's in there. You can clone them, save them, export them, you can get it done. Uh, and all these configurations are safe to the card. It's not software on the PC, like you unplug the card, Cart knows everything you did to it, so you can move it and plug it into whatever you need it with those special settings. And the reason I'm bringing this up, we talked about this on Weekly Daily Wednesdays, is if you have retro gaming consoles. Because all these years, if somebody's like, yo, I'm trying to get this to work with my NES and it's plugged into the HDMI upscaler and I'm trying to get this particular moon badass fucking frequent, Mage will take care of it. Always has. Like, one thing I like to do for these is uh, what I just call BIOS and boot test or I plug in a capture card, I boot a PC, because you know your UEFI screen is always going to be a squirrely resolution, so is your grub screen and your initial boot screen. This thing captures the entire process, so it'll definitely handle whatever retro tink you got plugged in. But I know what you're thinking, man. 300 bucks ain't worth it. And I agree with you. It's not. 300 bucks is too much. To, you know, and admittedly, you could brain somebody with a casing on this thing, it's, it's that solid and, and, and steal 300 bucks from them uh yes like if you threw this thing into the wall it will stick there and giggle at you like you're, you're not gonna hurt it at all like i started to take it apart in the video and i'm like i'm not i don't think i'd take this apart i don't have the right equipment uh it does work with a web rtc you know as a regular webcam pixel peeping head over to interfacing linux this is going to be in the show notes there'll be a link uh, if you want to see how it stacks up against the evga xr1 of course, completely unfair comparison of the Blackmagic Quad 4K, just because, like, whatever. But this was funny. It killed my Microsoft keyboard. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature. Now, it didn't kill it dead, 
But within 30 to 45 seconds of plugging in the Magewell USB capture card, that thing no longer works <laughs> at all. Like it starts with like intermittent heat, then it just dies. Mm. And it completely comes back the second you unplug it. So I don't, again, I don't know if that's a bug or a feature, but it is there. I'm going to tell you, instead of $2.99, you can get these on eBay for 60 bucks all day long. 50 bucks. $39, $69. So if you want nice. something that, and the reason I opted for this, because I didn't even plan on doing a video. I didn't even know they had that capture utility thing. And I saw it, I was like, that is so cool. Um, all the uses, but mainly because of that metal casing. Because you think about the reinforcement you get with the USB and the HDMI, and you can just throw it behind something. You can walk on these things. You could probably very well drive an automobile over and you're not going to dent it because that is not, it's, you know, when you see a metal casing, you're like, yeah, no, all of that is just <laughs> thick milled aluminium like you're not going to damage it so for like 60 the, bucks the, the, and that's why i picked it up because i just tossed it back behind the piece i don't have to worry about it i'll never pull it out again until it smashes into the tempered IDs. glass desk yeah Clo cloning edid bit is interesting especially if you have a game console which does uh hdcp mm -hmm. hdmi copy protection yeah here's another thing it does Pedro. <laughs> you know like when you go into obs and you plug in a capture card it gives you a list of resolutions you can pick and choose what resolutions this thing will offer up. You can yeah. like, oh, let's say I only want 720p and 1440p, and that's it. And that's that's all it'll take. And so that It'll way you can adjust. Remove the abstraction entirely. Gone. Yeah. Like you don't have to worry about it. Like especially if like I need, if you need to focus on like up converting or down converting something. Like this signal is coming in at 1080p, and I got to bust it down to 720, or if it's a UHD signal. Just pro level shit that most people won't really care about like but it's a major world product that's indestructible and that thing will outlive you like it's a good investment for 60 bucks and uh but yeah if you need stuff like that knowing that you can get one of these uh for that price oh there's a link to everything over on interfacing linux you can find it under cleverly hidden in a whatever category video capture something i don't know where did i put it under <laughs> there's a video too uh, According to the cards. URL, it's just in the. Uh... <laughs> if I, I guess if you search Magewell on interfacinglinux.com, it'll also pop up. Possibly. Yeah. That's all I got. Everybody, run out and go buy one. They're they're super cheap. I love a good value like that, and I love telling people about good values like that. I'm always on the lookout. I'm like, that's an incredible deal. If you are uh, in the market for a USB capture card, like that's the one you need to buy. Now I got to talk about Heroic Two Thirteen and Dorian Bragi. Yeah, What's, Bragi. What, what is Bragi? I don't know Bragi. I th so they're all One Piece characters. I know this. That's and that, oh. that's it. So it's it's a One Piece reference. That's it. Okay. I cannot confirm or deny that. Uh, we got <laughs> changes, man. What is heroic? Well, in order to understand heroic, you gotta uh, know it's brother. And uh, yeah, not really. I'm I'm looking at it right now. It's a game launcher. It's been out. How long has it been out? Like three, four years now. Almost yeah, two yeah. years, three years. Somewhere in there. And it works with GOG, Epic, and all that. You know, it's kind of like Lutris a little bit, kind of, if, if you squint. And it's Lutris, but more focused on just the GOG, Epic implementations rather than Lutris, which attempts to run everything from every platform. A a emulators. Also, to, uh, also yeah. it's a bit more focused on the uh, cross platformness. Well, you, also, you, yes. you, you, you gotta, <laughs> especially when, you know, the Epic Games Store and the GOG app. They all kind of suck. Yeah, a lot of Windows and Mac uh, updates on this one because, yes, Heroic is a better client for GOG and Epic than the official ones. Mm. Go figure. <laughs> hey, man, they, they, they found a faster way of downloading and updating Linux native games. Asterix. Now, how does Asterix work? I would naturally assume that there would be a part two of this somewhere on no, this page. The, the, no. you, you already skipped the Asterix. It was right below that. Oh, what the hell? But, but, but oh, that, yeah. was for, that was for the Works ability to install when installing and Windows and games. Ah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, but the, the thing there says faster way of downloading, installing Linux native games. So mm -hmm. like, I, I, again, I, 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 see, I see the issue here. Yeah, here's the other thing. Asterix. Yeah. And so, that one. Some, and that yeah, one. So, yeah, and some, one. someone someone didn't do a proofread on these release notes. Uh, the one one cool thing about this though is uh, you can actually buy games on GOG through Heroic now, and they get a cut. So if you want to support oh, that's them, neat. you can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Proton. It, it, it's genuinely good. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still waiting. 
hopefully for uh the integration with the uh Edwards uh play oh, button, uh, wiggle w- w- wiggle yeah wiggle w- 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 wiggle wiggle uh it, w- once he's over pedro abandoning his uh <laughs> Once he's over not caring any more than he ever did. Yes. Just sma- smash cut to Eggy in the shower, just crying <laughs> with like Celine Dion playing in the background. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. Once that pops in, then I'll start playing with Lutris and I'll start playing with the stuff right here. But, you know, what really impresses me about uh, Heroic Game Launcher is that commitment to being truly a cross platform application, which is so much extra work to keep that uh, with parity. Oh, I'm glad to see it. Yeah, for sure. Um, they, they, they have a bunch of other fixes in here too. Like, uh, no more double input on the steam deck. Cause like St- steam deck support for this is another big one. Cause you know, if you want to play those non steam games on your steam console, uh, you're going to need to use something like this and hell, even they, they added uh, red launcher support for more saucy or cyber trucking. You can have the multi dong mod or whatever, whatever you want. I, don't, <laughs> I, have, I have, honestly, I haven't looked at what kind of mods are available for cyberpunk, but I assume like. Everything. At least 25% of them are all, like, genital-related. I mean, most of that's already built in the game, though, man. All right, well, this this one lets you, like, strap a flamethrower onto your onto your stuff, right? Okay, so right. <laughs> you, 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 you get a new attachment point for your cybernetics. Okay. <laughs> oh, fire crotch has a whole new meaning now. Okay. <laughs> there, 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 but there, there's a mission in Cyberpunk where you have to help Jesse Cox, straight-up Jesse Cox. <laughs> Remove a flaming cybernetic penis from him because he got it from a back alley dog. <laughs> straight up, straight you up. You say shit like that makes me want to play it, man. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves, get your fixies, your PBR, and your American spirits for uh, a little bit of hipster retro nostalgia. And I'm just, oh. I'm, I'm trying to fill, man, uh, for I, a game I, 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 all yes, the way back. I, this game right here, PS One, black CDs, Ooh, black box. That's how you know it's yeah. legit. PlayStation, legit. <laughs> PlayStation One, Legend of Dragoon was one of those uh, JRPGs that came out in the two thousand or in the late nineties, um, and uh, developed a bit of a fan base. I enjoyed it. Uh, Sony dropped that franchise like uh, so many so many babies at the maternity ward, but you know it had it still had a fan base. People enjoyed it for what it was. It had like the DDR style combat where you have to like do the quick time events to actually hit stuff. And uh, someone has decided, well, we are not going to get a LOD remake, so I'm gonna do it myself. And so you can now. This is a full engine reimplementation of Legend of Dragoon. You need um, you need the ISO or bin files from the Legend of Dragoon CD ROMs. Here's here's number one. It has it's got darts on it. Uh, yeah, which which I totally popped into my CD ROM drive and extracted to test this out today. Absolutely, that's what I did for my legitimate copy of Legend of Dragoon. But yeah, you know, I really like how they kept the PS1 aesthetic with the screenshots for the instructions. That was really <laughs> nice. <of me>. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, it, it adds, it adds a bunch of quality of life updates. It adds, um, texture scaling. Um, you can remove the annoying nineties JRPG protagonist. That's a quality of life update, but yeah, um, uh, uh, cinematic playback is a little bit shitty. Uh, it runs at like 12 frames a second, but the game itself works out of the box. Uh, so I was, I was, I was quite impressed by that. I was less impressed by the fact that apparently I remember you being able to skip through cutscenes, but apparently I made that up. That was uh-huh. not a thing. So you got, you got to sit through all the PS one cutscenes. I, I think I might spend some more time with this though. Uh, because yeah, I, I liked or legend of Dragoon. Oh, they live stream and- on Wednesdays. Oh, nice. I'm trying, I'm <laughs> desperately trying to find screenshots while you guys are talking, man. Uh, they yeah, have it, a video it, on the, uh, the landing page. If you just click on the home. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 they have a video it's, it's that I watched PS1. that. Yeah, but yeah, what I want to a... show to the people at home, Pedro, is the 4K60 update. Yes. Uh, yeah, that video is in 4K. <laughs> I was just reading what it's at now. I assumed because it said yeah. 4K. Are yeah, we that, that's the video that they have linked on the homepage of the website. Why would I want to go to that one? No, I can find it. <laughs> it's the I, same. I, I, I want to I go pay my taxes. Can you click on that link on the top right hand corner? Maybe. But yeah, no, I, I was watching that video, and at 4K, you can count all 12 polygons that make up the main character's head and hair. That was <laughs> the, the texture upscaling that they used is pretty good. That, that, the, those the, textures look crisp. Good the job. soundtrack Very holds up, job. too. It's actually pretty bumping. Dude, uh, I mean, like, one of the things I'll say is, like, when I see people, uh, like, doing screen caps of, like, because they'll have, like, you know, the retro tank and, like, the 4K yeah. upscaler for their 
uh, actual hardware. And they're like, doesn't, I was like, no, that look, this, this looks fucking horrible is what this looks like. This looks nothing like it used to. And I like sharp and pixels and polygons. That shit didn't go together back in the day. Man. I'm <laughs> no, not a fan. It, it, it was of, like, all fuzzy. Yeah. I'm not a fan of retro crisp. I'm not a, I'm not I, a fan I, of square I don't mind pixels. retro crisp. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it doesn't bug me that much either, but yeah. I uh, know. So th- this is this is dope as hell. Uh, it's still in progress, done entirely on Java, so it's pretty cross-platform. And and yeah, le- more more Legend of Dragoon, Sony. Why why don't why don't you make another one of these guys? But it's, the it's, it's like it's like <laughs> sharpening and whatever, whatever. Yeah. No AI, AI are dumb. Take take Pedro out first. <laughs> Robots. I for one. Sharp, sharp sharpen Pedro as much as you can. Make him yes. as pointy as possible. Pointy Pedro. Yes, give. Me- Make me out of polygons. Yeah, man, Pedro, we had an announcement from Xbox this week. They they stopped the presses. They had to do social PR, like, pre-damage. Like, calm the fuck down, nerds. Yeah. The, 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 well, there was that rumor going around that uh, apparently Microsoft was dropping the Xbox thing and they weren't going to be doing any more Xbox. So uh, Phil Spencer felt the need to do a podcast with a bunch of other Xbox uh, higher-ups to say, no, no, it, here's the thing. Um, we're still doing Xbox and we are releasing a bunch of exclusives to other platforms, mostly games that no one cared about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is, they had to put that in writing, but at the same time, the verge, uh, saw that and decided, you know what? They need to release something to compete with the steam deck. And, uh, yeah, stop the presses. The Verge has an opinion. Um, the, <laughs> uh, they, they bring up the whole, uh, reduce fragmentation and, you know, make the, um, this hypothetical Steam Deck competitor that they are not going to be doing, uh, just m- make it, um, you know, pair with the Xbox and Game Pass and whatnot. It's like, okay, if we're trying to release Motherfucker, you're talking about the company that released the Zune. Don't tell me what Microsoft yeah. will and will not release. <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> Surface tablets. Remember, RT. And, and like, yeah, here, and here's here's the thing. The original Surface, I wanted that fucking table. Like, legit, I wanted that oh, table. Oh, that was computer. dope as fuck. Right? Yeah, the, yeah. the table was interesting, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, no, if the point is to reduce fragmentation, then, okay, let's just have Microsoft release a native steam os client for a game pass or you know one that doesn't require 20 steps uh to be fair the it Wait, doesn't I'm require confused. 20 Why steps does this anymore tweet, tweet say this is what i want like that's that is he, he, he yeah, wants yeah, a rock the, ally yeah, yeah. The, uh, the rog ally with uh game pass oh. uh but you, wait, you yeah. can't you can't install game pass on a fucking rug ally running windows 11 yes apparently not Oh. It's impossible. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, the, 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 this is this is a mock-up. It's only possible Jordan, in Photoshop. Jordan, it fucked Tom up, dude. All right. <laughs> I, I, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I feel for Tom. I have dreams. I mean, that will Tom, never be fulfilled. It's like Tom, he Tom had to get he, uh, whatever. He the, has. All right. Go ahead. Fine. No, he has the uh, psychological disconnect to know that he can do it, but at the same time, he wants a device that he can just buy with it already done for him. Uh, the, I don't know how it works, but that's exactly what he's demonstrating there. No, he, the, he wants lock in, he wants control and he wants yes. what's going to make none of this shit ever work right for you. Either PlayStation, much less you Microsoft is because y'all and motherfuckers, PlayStation. what you want to do is make portable fucking consoles. That's not <laughs> what people want. There's one company and get away with that. That's called Nintendo. They've been doing a good job with it. What valve got right. What steam and all that together. They finally cracked that fucking puzzle of giving you a gaming PC that you can carry around with you. And that's an open platform, an an actually truly open platform. And if Microsoft got off their ass and made a native client, then just like, Oh, okay. We have game pass on steam. Neat. (laughs) Well, and and, and, then like the, the hoops that you need to jump through to get game pass working on your steam deck is literally installing a, a community version of edge. Uh, yes. community flat pack version of edge and then it will magically work all of a sudden i don't know like see my, microsoft seems to be getting out of like the hardware game they're, they're they're transitioning to cloud services i think they've realized microsoft corporate microsoft has realized like it oh, doesn't next matter you're gonna tell me that they get rid of all their branded peripherals last year right yeah <laughs> but they're coming back there's a third party company that bought the rights to <laughs> make them oh, again <laughs> <laughs> is it is it called Sidewinder? I don't know. But like no. <laughs> but but new Microsoft has realized it doesn't matter as it doesn't matter what people are running their software on as long as you're locked in their ecosystem. That's the genius of Game Pass, right? Is that 
as long like you're not you're not giving Sony any more money, you're not giving Steam any more money, you're giving Microsoft your ten dollars a month and they're going to give you however many games that you're able to play within that time frame. Um, and like, to, yeah, to, 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 to Pedro's point, like making, making that proliferate and making that run on everything is probably like the more stable, uh, long-term strategy that Microsoft has, especially once they want, once you start like taking game streaming into the, into the mix, right? Why even sell you a console when I can just sell you a subscription service, uh, that you can play on your phone. Cause right, you, got, Jordan, you guys have you've phones, sold me. Right? It's also going to support cloud gaming done. I mean, it, uh, it, yeah, it already, I mean, that's, no, that's no, what, yeah, I mean, you're going to have to pay extra for it. Already you, you, you yeah. know, you're going to pay extra for it. <laughs> of course. But it will support it. Yes. Sure. No, well, the, the, you, you need, you need the, the Windows 11 Pro Gamer Edition, right? Yes. If you, if, if you want to run more than two games at once on your Windows handhelds. Oh, that's no, bitch. That's like, just if you want Discord open in the background. Right, yeah. <laughs> you, no, do, you, do you want VLC to play some music? <laughs> And Sony is like Sony being, you know, the, the the one competitor to Nintendo on the handheld um, gaming console before the Steam Deck was a thing. They fucked it up repeatedly because the like the PSP, the original one was really, really popular at the start because of all the homebrew and how open it was to uh, homebrew and people being able to load up their own thing. And there were a bunch of community efforts right off the bat to get a solid homebrew community going and the immediate next um major update to the firmware locked that shit out again that was like the third time that sony had done something stupid like that like removing the ability to install linux on their ps3s it, it, yeah, it, Sony, I wouldn't trust Sony to release a handheld console and supporting it anywhere beyond, I don't know, two years anymore. It's okay. You you can just buy a PlayStation portal and play on yeah. Wi-Fi in your house. You, you can, to your you can buy the Wii 5. U for PlayStation. Uh, yes. If I have to look at the two companies, like the one that I have more faith in, like, will fucking at least try it. No, I mean, Sony will. Like, so, so, well, so, Sony has the consumer electronics background, right? Like, yeah. I... But then again, you know, like Microsoft, when, when I did uh, bring up that they got rid of their branded, you know, electronics, like my keyboard, uh, really great. You know, Microsoft's known for their peripherals, man. Like they have Microsoft mouses. Like people are like, those are dope as shit. Si- sign wider. Uh, I, I brought that up. The, the yeah. joysticks. Like the it's been relatively quality stuff. And that's one thing I've always been like, all right, I'll give, I'll give you a pass on that one. But they're not out of the hardware business altogether. They're, they're going to focus on their surface line and you know if you're familiar with like the microsoft surface tablets and like all the other things the surface books and like i could see them making like a windex like the surface ws 319 model whatever it's it's the gaming surface the gerfus the gerfus the zune 2 rezune the the, 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 the surface the surface that there you go <laughs> And yes, if you want any more ammunition against this particular article on The Verge, they actually bring up the teraflops and say that the Lenovo Legion uh, has more teraflops than the Xbox Series S. But how many pancakes can you cook on it, though? (laughs) I fucking know. (laughs) So, so, someone please run that test and send us some hate mail. Get a ROG ally, get a Steam Deck, and start cooking some pancakes on them. Microsoft, Which cooks pancakes what faster. I need you to do is release this thing, lock it down, make it an Xbox where it plays uh, older Xbox titles, no Windows games, just Xbox shit, and release Bloodborne on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> just get, get a special dispensation from Sony, yeah. backport it to Xbox Sony's 360. I don't think Sony is going to let their, uh, you know, th- their last hope of a... Uh, but 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 exclusive like, no, but, darling. <laughs> but Pedro, this is this is an Xbox 360 port of Bloodborne. It's not it's not it's not even it's not even like it's not it's it's not even like it's not PS4. even the PS4 era. It's, yeah, it's it, 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 is, it, is, it is Xbox 360 Bloodborne. <laughs> but let's talk about that fucking announcement, man. Uh, that made the news. But I, I brought it up last week, like with the rumors and stuff. People were like, "Are the Microsoft going to quit making consoles?" And the internet was flipping the fuck out about it. Oh, I'm like, okay, I got to check out this Microsoft business announcement show thing, which was like 20 minutes. That was a waste of fucking bandwidth. They didn't say anything. They're like, we're going to release because like the, the big thing, the believable thing was Microsoft announcing, hey, man, we're going to be doing cross platform with PlayStation, and maybe Nintendo. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Microsoft couldn't even get that shit right. They were like, 
we're going to release four titles like that. But we're not going to tell you in the announcement. Like, why? Why, why? Why are you releasing this? Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, I don't see Microsoft making a Steam competitor, a Steam Deck competitor. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't think they have the interest, interest for it. They, right? they don't have to drive. I, Microsoft feels to me more like the... They, there is a push inside Microsoft to be more of a services software subscription. Yeah. Like look, that, look at look at uh, LinkedIn. Look at look at GitHub. Right, like so much. Like, yeah, Teams. Um, they know where that money is. is. Now. Windows yeah. on web. <laughs> so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we got to worry about anything. Maybe, like, see, even when I see this, man, I don't even see Microsoft really focusing or taking serious a mobile version. You know, something that's optimized for these types of devices. And these types of devices, everybody, are the future. Whether or not you like it, because we're, we're sitting here with our desktops and our discrete GPUs. Shit's getting expensive, son. So, you know, especially if you're a teenager, if you're looking around like, I want a game, I want that gaming PC experience. But you know what? I don't have $1,000 to drop on, you know, a S tier rig. You're going to buy something like a Steam Deck. Maybe not like the ROG and shit, because that's like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars And that's what you're going to be carrying around gaming. And that, that's where stuff's going to go, man. Oh, it's going to be interesting to see how that evolves. And it's going to be interesting to see how long Microsoft, how far behind that fucking bowl Microsoft gets before it goes, wait, the internet is a real thing. Because it wasn't for Microsoft for a long time. That shit was a fad in Windows for a minute. Here, here, that's the here, thing. Here, here's the tinfoil hat 40 chess thing people are complaining about the xbox series s and how it's holding back games and how you can't make you can't make good games anymore because it has to run on that this is this is what's going to keep that low spec gaming alive but this 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 is their this is their 40 the handbox <laughs> yeah handbox <laughs> the handbox h series the the, the hex box that, that's, Actually, that's, 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 the that's, thing. that's a sick fucking name for a console, though. Don't the use Xbox. that. Xbox. Yeah. The, the Steam Deck, especially the, the new OLED one, is more than good enough to play games on the go. And then even if you don't have a lot of money, you buy a USB-C dock that has an HDMI out. You plug that into your TV at home. It's like, hey, there's your console. And you can well, play you games on the big You also have the screen. ability not to pay fucking 60 bucks for every game. Yeah. Yes. Well, and, and it and will I, play games, Microsoft exclusive games that have been released on Steam, and it will play Sony previously exclusive games that have been released on Steam, and it will play Nintendo Switch games, not officially released, but you can play them. Uh, and yeah, it will literally play everything. <laughs> yep. Maybe, maybe maybe you can cover it up in some yellow paint. I don't know. Make make it easier. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, some people got problems with yellow paint. Some people got problems with markers. Some people got problem, man. Some people got problems with fucking white. I don't take away my white point markers. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I mean, I, I love me some yellow paint. Perfect, per, uh, personally, it's my favorite flavor uh, after green or green. Green is a close second. But anyways, yeah. So there, there's some discourse happening. I fucking brought this up on on the Thursday stream, and so I am cursed to talk about it. Um, so, uh, the new Final Fantasy VII, uh, demo is out, and it has some painted walls where you can climb and clamber and whatnot. Damn, that new and Untitled Goose game looks unhinged. It's unhinged. <laughs> is, is this the new version of Skyrim? Todd Howard? Yeah. Yes. It's the horse. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, new, 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 uh, pe people have been sh showing off footage of the new FF7 Rebirth. It has the yellow markers that indicate where you can and cannot traverse, and this is created the discourse of course um and people are talking about oh, oh my, oh my. God. <laughs> it's so it's so jarring it's so ugly i i like i i, I don't know that Me is traditional whatever gold rock yeah would be it, 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 it's, it's 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 fools it's sulfur right like sulfur yeah, yeah. sulfur yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sulfur, Just sulfur, sulfur to fart rocks yeah ab absolutely <laughs> um so like yeah there, there's the discord of like are these necessary is this too much where is the middle ground? People, people are mad about it, and they're putting their opinions out on the Twitters, on the Mastodons, on the Blue Skies, now that it's open to the publics. Uh, and, I don't know, my, my take on this is, as someone who has, like, really, really bad ADHD, and gets lost really fucking easily, anything that, I am pro anything that tells me where the fuck I need to go and what the fuck I need to be doing, 
Yeah, people are people are dumb. There, there, there are, there are, uh, there's the Portal 2 commentary tracks and the Half-Life commentary tracks that are like, yeah, we couldn't get people to fucking go down this hallway until we specifically put an arrow that says go down this hallway. And I, I think this is, this is a, this is a consequence of like games becoming more and more realistic. The graphical fidelity increases and increases and you want more and more of these dynamic environments. How the fuck are you supposed to tell what you are in fact supposed to interact with? And we need some kind of design language to indicate this. And yellow paint seems to be something that people reasonably understand relatively quickly and conveys the point. So I, I, I don't, I don't know much like modding easy mode into dark souls. Why not just have like mods to take the colors out? Cause it's all the same color anyways, nothing else in that game is that color. So you just got to like find it and like clone it or some shit. I don't know. I, or I feel like if, yeah, if you're a game developer and you're, doing okay no we got to do the things because our testers have clearly demonstrated that they're a little too thick to figure out the right way to go so we're going to put yellow things to indicate the right way to go absolutely get that on by default but give me a toggle because you know there's people like me who think they're hot shit and they can live uh, without that and they can uh, probably enjoy your game more if they don't feel like you're holding their hand the entire time. Well, it does come down uh, so, to like play style though. Cause I know Pedro yeah. is a lot like me. Like we're, we're more, we're more geared to even on a subconscious level to find places. We're not, not supposed to go. Like I end up clipping myself inside walls and in every game that I play because I'm wall humping and I'm looking for the secrets and I'm looking for the things that are off the beaten path. So yeah, give people like us the option to turn it off. That that would be great. It shouldn't be that difficult, man. <laughs> uh, you know, this I wouldn't say this bothers me, but it does. When when I read this, I'm like, yeah, that does kind of like annoy me a little bit. Like in games, like uh, like the big lines on the cliffs in a undiscovered remote mountain village in Tomb Raider, and I'm like, come on, guys. I mean, that bugged me a little bit. And you know, you ran into the same thing with like Mad Max and Horizon Zero Dawn. Like they're all there, and like sometimes I'll even try to explain them, and I'm like, that's even worse. That's more insulting. But I agree with uh, Pedro with like, let's keep that around for accessibility because hundred percent, I understand like I, I, that's a good excuse for it or like an on, like, or even a visibility slider. Like maybe I can cut it on, you know, just like raise the gate a little. Right. And, uh, like for navigation, that's a bullshit excuse. Quit trying to use that. This, this is YouTube. Like you don't get lost in fucking video games anymore. Like, you just want to be, uh, if you want to go from point A to fucking point B, like play a drag strip game. Um, but I, I, agree. Don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think like watching a YouTube video should be a prerequisite to like playing a game, right? Like that wasn't when we were growing up and we didn't have fucking yellow shit painted everywhere either. Yeah. Cause yeah. everything was in a straight goddamn line most of the time <laughs> at, at, in certain games. But that was also the time when the wastelands See, and grow the early fallouts and doom with the highly labyrinthian levels yeah there, there, there's there, there's many examples of now, games on. Now, now with doom i mean you couldn't jump <laughs> correct yeah, <laughs> yeah do, do. well and, but and, and, and still like, in 3d <laughs> but, and, but, and, and, that, and that, that's the thing like you you like so i'll, I'll, I'll like like everything i'll liken this to dnd because i'm a giant nerd whose brain is rotten can but, you like, jump as, in D? Yes, you can. You can, you, can <laughs> you, 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 you can do a twirl if you want. It's, it's cool. You can do a flip. Um, but like a, a, a as a DM, no, that's, that's outside the rules. I'll, I'll fucking kick you out of my group. Right. I'll never talk to you again if you try to do that shit in my game. Um, no, but like um, you run into the shit in D&D all the time when you're designing scenarios, right? Where uh, you, you have like a path in mind and your players will do something else. They'll hyper focus on, on other things. And at a certain point, you got to say, yo, this wall is just a wall. This bush is just a bush. Stop humping it. And I, yeah, sh I, I think like sh certain, certainly it's, it's a problem with it's, it's a game design problem, right? Where you need, you need to find, you need to find that language. You need to find that framework that allows people to intuit what you need to do with your game. And I, I don't know, oh, especially with like the emphasis on open world games. I don't think there's like, yeah, so aside from having like a slider or something, I, I don't think there's really any sort of like happy middle ground. You're going to need to have some way to indicate where you need to go. Yeah. You need to, you know, it's an open world game. So you need clear to 
Yeah, you need you need you clear need clear arrows goals pointing to where you can cannot explore. Look at look at what they fucking did with uh, Breath of the Wild, right? They like managed that all with landmarks. You can do it. Like, oh, it can be done. Game design. I mean, that that's my whole thing. Like once once you get to the point where you get to start putting paint and like chalk marks and like shit like that, like visual identifiers. To me, that's like an indicator of like fucked up level design. Like you've already <laughs> fucked yourself. And you're like, how are people going to be able to figure out how to get here? Uh, like, I, I don't know. I use story elements like they did in the uh, older Bethesda titles, like where you'd run across a fucking court and like, this is some bullshit up here. Here's a little map I've drawn. Maybe yeah, go like this fucking proper way. Environmental design can usually solve that problem very organically. Uh, the, yeah. The no, Pedro, we need the- a big arrow and say warp whistle here. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, th- I think I've already I think- brought the Bethesda games, but yeah, the, for all of their flaws when it comes to actual plot, the environmental design is usually spot on. That's the thing they do really well. And in that same vein, uh, um, the Outer Worlds, the Obsidian game that was very much clearly uh, a- aping not, not the Fallout. Bethesda Fallouts. Yes. Fallout uh, New Vegas in Space. Uh, that game actually has the perfect example of this because by default it has the whenever you look at an item that you can pick up or you can interact with, it gets a little outline, a little bright outline around it so you can easily make it out. But they also give you an option to just cut that shit off. Mm-hmm. So everything just looks and, th- and that's, that's fits something I can appreciate. World. We talked we touched <laughs> on that in the pre pre super shows and go back and listen to our uh, production meeting if you want, if you're a patron. But like in the new Tomb Raiders, you have a uh, Laura Vision. Or you throw out the, uh, you know, Laura sense grenade, tomb, tomb sense, yeah, or, and you get, like, uh, the things that light up. Or never one nights where you can hit alt and it will show you all the things that you can yep. select or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Like these are and, ways around that. I, well, I, even but, that, like, but we talked about the Batman game. Like the Batman game is like the ultimate extreme about like, wait, I just yeah. cut this on and leave it on. Yeah. And that to try, I feel like having that option because listen, we're all human beings. We're like, wait, that's just a fucking cheat button. You want me to cut that off? Cause I'm not. Yeah. And, and it's like game games are many types of arts, but art, but one of the, one of the types is commercial art and commercial art needs to be accessible. It needs to be able to appeal to a low, lowest common denominator and be able to be playable by as many people as possible. So I, I don't know. I'm, I, I would, I personally would say like err on the side of caution, add more of these things. Sure. Give people a way to turn them off if you want, but like. I don't know if if you're not if you're not going to have them, then you also got to deal with the feedback of your game is obtuse and no one knows what the fuck is happening. Right. Like race to the bottom. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) No matter what you do, whether you have the dog or you don't have the dog, someone's going to give you shit for it. Uh, But yeah, it is. I'm very much in camp. Yes. Have it on by default, but give me. And yeah. other people like me, the option to turn it off. Like, I, I don't, like I said, I, I don't even get wound up about this stuff. I just like mm. find it, uh, like visually annoying and it like detracts a little bit from my, like what immersion that I'm going to get from a fucking video game when like, yeah, there is like yellow paint or white chalk on everything. And I'm like, cause then my brain goes into like lore storytelling mode as a game <laughs> dev. And I'm like, how do we explain this bullshit? Um, they did that in Mad Max a little bit because they had like the painted bits mm-hmm. and then they had like a can of paint with some <laughs> paint brushes stuck in on the ledge. It's like, eh, okay, so they just left the stuff there. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, it, 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 it can be a little bit insulting to the player in a very strange way uh, because Mad Max was a good example of like, yes, where the fuck else could I possibly have gone game? I don't really need the... Uh, <laughs> big go here thing uh i got it but yeah being able to cut it off would be dope and it shouldn't be too hard to uh, like add a trans you know an alpha it, it, or it's whatever. a yeah. shader if they're yeah. using shaders for everything probably using it for that too just make that shader its own separate layer and make an option to say cut that layer off Gone, uh, done. E- even beyond that, the whole reason they picked that color is because they don't use that color anywhere else in the game. You can easily write a mod that turns that color transparent, and then you'll never have to see it again. It's yeah, I don't so really want to have to install a fucking mod or rely on third parties. Like, let's get in the habit of putting it. Yeah, in the l- game. L- like the YouTube videos. <laughs> let's not rely on the third parties. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 Dark, so yeah, Dark Souls should have an easy mode. That's our conclusion. Add it in. Uh, yeah yep. absolutely yep. i'm very much pro more people enjoying dark souls yeah like if the argument's like let's add more options i'm like cool yep. 
Yeah, yeah abs- <laughs> abs- abs- absolutely. Well, like g- games these days, like with the with the difficulty options, they're like really they're really fine grained now. Like you can uh, BG has like uh, enemy AI and aggression and stuff. You can like a, a lot of games have the ability to like tweak the difficulty settings. And more on, like, games need to things. have a Twitch button in game where I can click on it and the game auto plays for me, so I can just sit back and watch it. Yeah, that's called Final Fantasy Thirteen. <laughs> that- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that that that's called tool assisted speed running. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to watch speed run, bro. That's a different channel. <laughs> not enough hot tubs. No, not at all. That's gonna wrap it up for the main chunky section. We still got a little bit of hate mail to get into, and if you want to send us your thoughts, hints, or allegations, we welcome. We might very well read them on this very show. How do you do that? Head over to Linux Gamecast. We got a contact form. Fill that shit out. Hit that send button. We'll take a look at it. You know, we're curious. We've brought up a lot of shit. What are your thoughts on yellow lines in games and why are we all wrong? You have like option three. You're like, fuck all of you. This is the way it should be. Drink, drink the paint. Drink yes. the paint. <laughs> be the paint, kids. Let us know your thoughts or leave a YouTube comment or a post on uh, Patreon. And uh, we might uh, read it next week. Who knows? Sometimes it takes a minute. But one thing we always have up there, if you're working on a game, you're a game developer and you're like, hey, man, I want to get a little extra traction. I want to talk to some people. And you're curious about the world of Linux gaming and you know how loud we hiss and are our claws sharp. We always welcome you to come on the show. Come check out what we got going on. We'd love to talk to you. You know, see what's going on. Free publicity, you know, holla. And somebody did. Uh, Michael, a Toronto boy. Yes. Uh, he says, hello, this is Michael from Replane. Thanks for talking about our demo in 2022. Our game has improved since then, so I hope you'll have a better experience with it. We are proud to announce the official launch date for our up- upcoming game, Dynacat, March 1st, 2024. We'd be happy if you could check out our game before the launch, and they gave us some codes. Yeah. Regards, Michael. We got keys for not Sonic. It, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, not, absolutely it's not Sonic not 3D. Sonic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's that Sega CD Sonic too, the 3D one. Oh, dude, you want to have Ultra Fun Time? This is getting released on uh, Xbox. Great, yeah. Yeah, no, this is very much like the Dreamcast Sonic uh, The after they went really, really weird with the Sonics. Are, but, are you talking about Sonic Adventure? No, I think, well, I think I'm, I'm getting like Sonic 3D, Sonic 3D, the spinball, yeah. 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 Uh, Sonic 3D, I played Sonic 3D Blast on the Saturn, and trust me, it is nothing like that. <laughs> I'm not talking about Sonic 3D Blast, it's Sonic 3D, right? Yeah. Wait, those are different games? I think so. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I thought we were going to get out of a hate section with that, uh... Sonic 3D Listen, listen, we, 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 got, we gotta pad the show somehow, right? Uh, Sonic we're, we're 3D out, 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 No, we're now in 15. Blast. <laughs> Alright, well, fa- well, what, Wait, I'm, no, no, I'm no, we, we, we got to settle this shit. We're not, no, we're not uh, copping out of this. Fine, <laughs> we, we, fine. We're, we're, we're not going to kitty cop out of it. No, and I think another week of this, I'm going to remember to log in with my uh, premium account. So that's okay, three Sonic Three D Blast is on Steam. There you go. Uh, there is no Sonic, just Three D. Son- uh, or it's Sonic CD. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sonic CD. No, that's not it. There, there was an isometric Sonic game for the Sega CD. There was one for the Saturn, wasn't there? Yeah, for the Saturn. That's Sonic 3D or Blast. Sonic 3D Blast. A lot okay, of it, maybe, yes. Okay. And maybe, maybe this one is for the Genesis. Yes. The, the, there was also on the, the Genesis. They, they, okay, is there anything else that was also on instead of just the one thing? No. Um, I think they re-released it, was, it, was, it on Steam. So It's on, it's, it's on the N64, <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, my point is this one is a lot more on rails ish like the dreamcast um release for oh, i can't remember is it sonic, sonic adventure? adventure yes um yeah th- this one is very much closer to sonic adventure but i'm sure we'll get some hate mail to say that it's neither of those and it's some other sonic game it's like shadow I, the hedgehog so, <laughs> well that's the thing sonic adventure is all like from behind right it's it's third person over the shoulder this is this is not that Sonic, Sonic 3D Blast, as I've ter- learned it was called, is, is more like this. So I, I don't know. Really? My the, only the camera critique angle, for absolutely, this but is, the movement uh, yeah, is like more. That, that's, yeah, dude, that's fucking Green Hill Zone, man. Come on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's got the, the movement thing. is more Sonic Adventure than. Because in uh, Sonic 3D Blast, you had complete freedom of movement. It was like the levels were open. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it looks yeah, very it, much follows the track. There, there's the fucking, like, Sega going to sue somebody. Uh, I think we said that. Back yeah, in those trees are. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, it's got a <laughs> Linux there's version. It's coming out. And uh, yeah, like, uh, like I said, man, like if you uh, take the time to write in, we'll, we'll give it a plug. Might not necessarily be our thing, but uh, yeah, my only complaint about this is uh, there's no running animation for your kitty cat protagonist. It's just, it's hover cat. Ah. Uh. You didn't. You didn't make no legs do some motion, man. <laughs> well, like all, all cats have like magnetic levitation abilities. They're all. They're all mm-hmm. gloves. This is one no, of no, no. You need to strap a um, <laughs> butter, butter a toast, toast with some butter. Yeah, a cat but only on some one jelly side. Toast so the cat will yes. hover in quantum yeah. position. Yes, <laughs> and yeah, then you yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the infinite energy rotating cat. <laughs> okay. Uh, last a uh, couple of weeks ago, this this actually came from uh, Odyssey. I was like, let's go see. We got an Odyssey channel. You think we don't bring up the fact that we have a YouTube channel enough? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're the, the one that we're streaming on right now. Then, yeah, <laughs> for the three people watching, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got numbers to back my shit up, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Odyssey is. Uh, I'll have to comment on. Uh, we were talking about like, hey man, what brought you to Linux, right? And, like, how do you end up on Linux? Where did, did you slip one day and you're like, fuck, building some Linux? <laughs> it, it, was, it was like a meet cute. Like, I was at a bus stop and I, I walked on to the bus at just the same time that Linux walked up, walked off and we like slammed into each other. And then that, and that's that, why that's you get that, that restraining order. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, I feel <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so Bruce, Bruce writes in Shark from Jaws says, you never know what will bring someone to Linux gaming. My dad at 75. Oh. Oh, 75, I guess, uh, uh, or greater than 75. I maybe. can't read today. Sure. Uh, d- <laughs> dabbled into Raspberry Pi and the Pi 4 as his first desktop, later the Pi 400. Now he wants to game on one of his older Windows PCs and decided that Windows felt weird and had to be replaced with something better, i.e. Kubuntu. The distribution Pedro should have installed. No, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't like snaps that much. Thank you very See, much. When, 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 I, when I think Kubuntu, I think empty. Empty is literally the only person I know who uses Kubuntu. Well, that's why you should have installed Kebian. Keep Kebian. Kebian. I have Kebian on a number of older laptops because 32 bit. If you want 32 bit modern day distro, you need to go with Debian. So, yes. Oh. Uh, I mean, hey, man, yeah, get the elderly hooked on Linux. I mean, starting uh, on just don't, the just don't hook their life support up to Linux. <laughs> <laughs> starting on the Pi, then Pi four hundred. That that. I mean, it makes sense, dude. Like, if somebody's like, "Hey, I want to fuck around with a computer," like, "Hey, hey, brother, give me a computer." I'm like, "Oh, here it's Pi four hundred. Fuck off." Um, <laughs> there you I, go. I mean, like, plug it you, in. You, done. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you, it's you a fucking. Uh, it's a Chromebook on a fucking budget. It's like, well, you can't break this probably here. <laughs> and, and you think a lot of people's gateway to uh, Linux, especially young people now, is the Raspberry, right? Yes. For uh, young people, no, that makes sense. I, I don't know a lot of young people that were able to fucking afford them for the past four years. That's or buy true. them. No, no, or, the Pi four. That's, that's why the like or, the, the last pie. one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like SBCs, maybe. Uh, that's one of the things I've talked about. Like Raspberry Pi doesn't know the knock on effect of like not having pies in the distribution channel for three plus years. Like that's coming back to bite them. It's going to be a minute. It's going to be a long term thing. But um, mm-hmm. people were buying other SBCs during that whole time. It didn't stop. Mm-hmm. And all the kids doing development and students and schools, they were still buying them. They weren't getting Raspberry Pis. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap us up tonight thanks for writing in bruce and letting us know that uh raspberry pi 400s are gateway drugs and uh make sure you get the mid jets and nano next time <laughs> because uh, or the orange pi the new handheld I, I, apparently I, I want one of those, the rumor says those the price on that's going to be accessible that's, a, that's what it says accessible price yeah. point accessible, accessible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they said it was on the lower end of the steam deck so the the lowest end steam deck is 399 brand new and um 350 for the refurb that's that could be good well we already know the number that pedro will buy it at so yes (laughs) i did buy a 399 steam deck (laughs) <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on that bombshell. Hey, if you want to come check us out, we do this show live every Saturday on Twitch. Did I mention we have a Twitch channel? Hey, Jordan, we have a YouTube channel too. Do you know that? Do we? Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> Fuck. 
it's there, man. It's YouTube. Who, who, forward who slash Linux YouTube? Gamecast. Uh, Twitch forward slash Linux Gamecast. And uh, I, I have no idea what our fucking Odyssey one is, man. <laughs> li- li- library TV dot Linux slash Linux Gamecast? Man. I don't yeah, know. Be- beats me. Uh, but thanks Punch for watching. If that's where you watch it. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Zitter, the Twitters. I'm uh, Vin on Blue Sky dot app social thing. And of course, Mastodon, where we're attacking spam this week, is uh, just at Vin at Mast. Dot Linux Gamecast dot com. I'm Jordan. If you Google me, you'll find me because I'm the only Jordan swung out there. Uh, yeah. At, at the Burning Fool on Twitter, at Frojo at Mass dot Linux Gamecast dot com, at Frojo at Bsky dot app. There you go. And you can find me longing for the missing chunk of hair that disappeared from my head this uh, afternoon. And <laughs> you can do so um, on, I don't know, uh, Mastodon? Yeah, that's the, the last one I have. It's just unaccounted for with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I mean, how else? What, what is Nori going to fill fucking voodoo dolls for with, uh, with homie? Like, I, 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 <laughs> hair don't grow on trees. Th- there are better, you know, <laughs> there are better on, materials on than my very they thin do. hair. <laughs> Time for some credits. <laughs> Brought to you by Phil Spencer. Goddamn Steve right. Ballmer's going to do a flip. Pay us. <laughs> well, it's that time. We made it through another one of these podcasts. Dear God, it's episode 600. we got to thank our advisors, Omegas and Artherum, our executive producers, Barbara Epps, Scott Michaud, Tom McCass, Mike G, Drummer, Tomas, Shakim, Dave, Ishep, Ian, Hoplo, and Kurducky. And our little Nicky fan, Super Desto, Empty. And hey, I hope he sticks around. Glorious Egg Roll. We gave him some shit this week. We love you. And see monsters with no rider X Machina, Trudgy Verse, and Justin Darkwing, System T, Dancing Joe, the Krasny, Kim, and Ogie One. No, no, Kim's not there anymore. And the Death Notes, Nova K, uh, Chad, Romeo, Renee, Leonardo, uh, Rue, Turnover, and they're what so tiny, Shalu, and Piper. <laughs> Look at those fine, upstanding cannibals fly into space. Bye, Frank. They're all truly wonderful. All right, beautiful people. If you like what we do, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast or just Linux Gamecast.com. Smash that support button. Look at a couple of options. We got some things for you as a thank you. But until next week, get out there. Die to fire. Five dudes. <laughs>